Is this thing on? Oh yeah, it's on. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to my post West Highland Way video. <laughs> at a local park. Look at how weird my hair looks, like sticking out aside from the cliff. <laughs> so I am out here getting ready to film my post West Highland Way gear video um, slash my thoughts on the trail. So let's get started. Got my pack piled up in here. Got my dog's stroller. Don't judge me. Get this out of here and get going. I'm coming to you from sunny central Florida and it is hot. It is hot as hell out here. As soon as I got home, I immediately missed the temps in the UK and I cannot wait to go back. If you're going to hike anywhere in Scotland, the West Highland Way is a must. There are not enough adjectives. It was definitely a challenge and it was a wonderful, wonderful adventure. Not only is it a must do and a must see if you are planning on hiking in Scotland, um, but it is something that you definitely want to prepare for. Being from Florida, I am used to very flat, very hot. I am someone who is pretty fit. Admittedly, I am not super strong in my cardio, so that is something that um, I definitely wish I had worked a little bit more on before going over there. As far as preparing for the West Highland Way physically, you need to be strength training as well as cardio training. You wanna work your legs, you wanna work your glutes, you wanna prepare for going up those mountains and also for coming down. I would train with a fully loaded pack. Um, Stairmaster, squats, um, anything that's gonna work your legs and your glutes, that is only gonna be a positive for you on this trail because there's a lot of climbing. <laughs> I joined um, a couple of Facebook groups to help prepare me. There are so many wonderful people in those Facebook groups for the various different trails. Most of the time, all the advice was sound. Everybody was super nice. I went late April specifically to avoid the midges. I also wanted some cooler temps. You are going to get wet. It is Scotland, it is wet. One of the pieces of gear that I brought that to me was absolutely worth a little bit of extra weight were the waterproof socks and the uh, gaiters. They kept the rocks and things out of my shoes and it just overall, they took a lot of the yuck that was out there on trail. You'll want to bring some cash. There are showers and campgrounds and public toilets that you must have cash in order to use. The majority of the time I was able to use my card. Some of the campgrounds had showers, but in order to have hot water. Um, I heard from some other people that you will need to have cash for hot water. Myself, all the places that I went, all the campgrounds that I stayed at had hot water for no additional charge. So um, if you're interested in learning what places I stayed at, definitely check out my other videos and my West Highland Way playlist uh, from day one. Take care of your feet. You will definitely want to take care of your feet. Um, I did a lot of research on foot care prior to this trail and I ended up um, choosing Injinji toe socks and I coupled that with Compede and a pair of wool socks over top and most days I had the waterproof socks over top of those. I had very very few blisters and very few foot issues and I think that my um, my setup with my socks and stuff really did help with that. Whatever you choose to walk this trail in, whether it be boots, trail runners, or, or whatever, realize that it's not gonna be the same for everybody. I had a pair of boots that I had walked in for a while prior to the trail, but walking in Florida on flat terrain versus walking up and down mountains in Scotland, it did not translate. 
So on day two, I was done with my boots. My feet hurt so bad. Um, this is where my decision to bring two pairs of shoes really did pay off for me. I brought my pair of ultra lone peaks thinking that if the boots didn't work out for me, I would switch to the trail runners. And that ended up being the best decision for me. As soon as I got rid of the boots and switched to trail runners full time, I was much more comfortable and I was able to complete the walk with much less discomfort in my feet. Practice with the shoes that you want to use and try them in real life situations. What I, even though I went further north to train in some conditions that were, you know, a little less flat, I really didn't take my boots to the mountains um, and, and try that and, you know, maybe I would have discovered that it wouldn't work a whole lot sooner, but needless to say, it all worked out in the end. Everyone that I met was friendly. I didn't meet anybody that had, uh, that, that was unpleasant. I mean, I really had a great time. As far as a female solo hiking in another country, um, I had a lot of the comments that you would expect to get, you know, in this country, like, oh my gosh, aren't you scared? Don't you think you should be going with someone? Don't you think you should be hiking with a guy? All that kind of stuff. I prefer to solo hike, that's just me. Um, when I am here in the United States, but I don't hike without a dog or several items of personal protection gear. So over there, I couldn't carry a gun. I didn't have my dog. So um, I was aware, I was aware of my surroundings and I was careful, but um, I did not encounter any issues. I wild camped in several places. There were days that I did hike with other people. There were days where I hiked, you know, by myself. So all in all, I would say that if you are a solo female hiker, you can feel pretty safe hiking this, this trail. Um, I think hiking in Scotland in general is, is pretty safe. Thought I heard something behind me. After my West Highland Way gear loadout video, I felt that I still could do better with regard to getting rid of some extra weight. A lot of the duplicate cords that I had for my electronic devices, I ended up leaving home, and I believe the only extras I brought were for my iPhone, my Garmin, and my charging block. If you elect to bring your trekking poles as I did, they will need to be wrapped and put in a separate bag to be checked in cargo. You cannot carry them on. I also had to put my tent pegs, my umbrella, and anything that was remotely sharp into that same bag to be checked. One of the areas I ended up saving a lot of weight was clothing. I packed too much clothing. Originally, I had four shirts and three pairs of pants, and it was just too much to have in this little stuff sack. My reasoning for packing more than one pair of day pants was one of them was bigger to accommodate the layers and the other one was if I was not wearing any layers. So one size was bigger than the other. I didn't need all of that. I should have just stuck with the smaller size because even on colder days, I did not hike in my layers. I also ended up eliminating two shirts and one sports bra from my clothing. I also ended up reducing the amount of toiletries I carried by probably half, if not 75%, as you really don't need shampoos, conditioners, or anything of the like, because you will come across that in hostels, campgrounds, hotels, what have you. That giant pack of wipes you see there did not make it on this trip, nor did the plastic little rubber thing around the towels. Um, a couple of the other small items like some of the GoPro accessories and the GoPro case. I also left those behind because I didn't intend on using half of the things that I brought. I kind of just thought I would bring them in case I would need them. So next time I will definitely be more deliberate with the types of electronics and accessories that I bring. This thing right here I debated from the beginning did not take. This guy right here, love it. It is absolutely adorable, but I did not use it on this trip. I think a trip where I do more wild camping, I will definitely use it. It just didn't happen this time. Don't need the cold weather gloves. Left them at home. Oh, and they ended up being the wrong size. I actually ordered the wrong size. 
Um, if you have long fingernails like me, that might be an issue. You may want to size up a little bit. Um, I ordered small and small ended up in the Marmot uh, outdoor gloves. Um, small ended up being too small for me. It was too snug a fit. So I would definitely go with the medium next time. Umbrella that I have. I did not use that. I think I took it out one time and used it just to say I, could, I used it. <laughs> it is, I think, more designed for hiking in the sun. Um, and you don't have a whole lot of that in Scotland. So absolutely unnecessary to bring. And, you know, just as far as having a regular umbrella, I live in Florida where it rains a lot. I don't use umbrellas that much and I would apply the same logic over there. I should probably talk about the pack that I brought with me. So the pack that I brought with me is this guy right here. This is my Z-Packs Arc Hall Zip 64. It is a 64 liter backpack. Love this thing. My, um, if I'm gonna review how it did on trail for the time that I carried it, um, because there were some days when I knew I was going to be staying at a B&B &B or a hostel or whatever, that I did pay for baggage transfer to carry the big bag on ahead. Um, but on the days that I carried it, it was fantastic. I bought an Osprey pack cover to use with this. And that worked really well because even though this is listed on the website as being um, made of water resistant uh, material, I did find that some of the things in there did get moist so keep that in mind. I would use a pack cover anyway, or a trash compactor bag. I am not a compactor bag fan. I don't like that. It's just, it's like awkward. I don't like using them. So I much prefer using a pack cover. There were some points at which water did get at it and there was a little bit of moisture inside, but it really wasn't that bad. Um, so that's why you may wanna make sure that you've got things that you don't want to be damaged by moistness to be in Ziploc bags or uh, smaller waterproof bags. Well, my favorite feature of this entire pack is the fact that uh, you can lay it on its side and open it up like a suitcase, which was the main deciding factor for me getting this particular pack. So yay, Z packs. Trekking poles, um, I have the black diamond Alpine carbon cork ones, the fufu ones that everybody was talking about a few years ago. These things held up like a champ and I don't know what I would do without them. If you're gonna do this trail, you want trekking poles. You do not want to be without trekking poles, in my opinion, it saved my knees. Um, coming down, especially coming down off of some of those hills, um, you, you wanna have some trekking poles. It also helped me to test the ground. There were several points on this trail where I had to take my trekking poles and stick it on the ground, like if I had to go off trail to, to uh, relieve myself, or for whatever reason, you, I took my trekking poles and tested the ground. There were some spots where I was able to push it down really, really deep. And if I had stepped on that, not only would I be messy, but I might've lost a shoe or had a difficult time getting myself out of the bog. So bring you some trekking poles and use them. My Garmin Mini, how it performed on trail, it was great. Um, it allowed my family back home to follow my family and friends back home to follow my trip and to see where I was at any given time. It also allowed me when I did not have cell service, which was in a couple of spots, most spots on the West Highland Way, you will be able to get cell service, um, but there are some spots where you won't. So for peace of mind, I wanted to have a way to communicate and a way to summon help if I needed it. So my Garmin Mini performed just as it should. It is a subscription service to pay, um, for using the Garmin service. So I will link that down below if you guys want to check that out, but it performed great. I was able to send out messages, messages got to me. You'll see in one of the videos that when you get a message, it sends you an alert and I didn't know how to turn the alert off. <laughs> so um, that took me a minute to figure that out. That piece of gear was definitely something that I would not go without. My tent which is probably the most important purchase I made for this trip. Uh, my tent is the Z-Packs uh, Duplex. I have the 
which one do I have? I have the, the greenish one, not the camouflage one, but I can't remember the color off the top of my head. I will link it down below, but it is made of a little bit thicker fabric, heavier weight fabric than the base model. So I wanted to have a little bit of extra durability because, you know, Scottish weather. I did test it in Florida weather because we do get some pretty good storms. So I did test it. Uh, those videos are also on my West Highland prep series. You can see those. And I did encounter some really heavy winds. I camped in some storms over there. There was a system coming through at the time that I was finishing up one of my hikes. The tent did very, very well. I was a little worried during one of those storms because it was, you know, flapping around quite a bit, but overall the tent performed very well. It is a single wall tent, so of course I had some condensation, but it really was not anything to be concerned about. I found it manageable, and even though I have a down comforter, um, that down comforter from Enlightened Equipment, or, or down quilt, sorry, the down quilt from Enlightened Equipment performed fantastic. I got the zero degree rated bag and it kept me so, so toasty. It did get a little bit of condensation on the outside, but it was something that dried very quickly. All in all, it performed really, really well. When I set out to do this trail, I was at a mentally rough period in my life. Like I was going through some things and I desperately needed to take things down a notch and really simplify them, which is really why I hike anyway, because there is nothing simpler than getting back to nature and getting outside with a few simple things, kind of bringing it back down to where we all started. Um, because in my opinion, we fill our lives with so much extraneous crap that it's hard to hear our own uh, inner voice over all the other noise that's going on. This was a very, very cathartic and important trip for me. The simplicity um, of each day is such a gift, um, especially in the society that we live in right now. So um, if you get the chance to experience something like this, definitely go for it. Um, the West Highland Way is perfect, in my opinion, for anybody who is looking for a good first hike in Scotland. So with that, I hope I have covered everything that I hoped to. I had a bunch of notes in my book, so hopefully I covered everything and hopefully you find some value in this video and um, if you are planning on doing your own West Highland Way hike I would love to hear about it so have a great one guys and I will see you in the next one bye that's a wrap